bad boys, bad boys. Do women really prefer so-called bad boys? Is there any truth to that? And what is a bad boy exactly? And is there anything good about being considered one or being one? We'll dive into the subject right after this quick word from our sponsor. Hey guys, Ashley here. Are you having trouble meeting the right girl? Are you struggling due to lack of confidence, not knowing what to say, or not having a plan? Are you tired of being told to act confident around women without being told how? If so, I'd like to introduce you to the Gentleman's Guide to Flirting book from David Sharp. If you are afraid to approach women in public, this book is for you. If you aren't having success meeting women on dating websites or apps, this book is for you. If you're having trouble connecting with women on dates, this book is for you. The Gentleman's Guide to Flirting has loads of modern, field-tested, and ready-to-use examples to help you confidently approach women and meet great women either in person or online. It also has practical, real-world advice to help you truly get the most out of the dating process. And it has thoughtful, practical advice for cultivating and sustaining your relationships for the long term. It's got it all, and you're going to love it. The book's website is gentlemansguidetoflirting.com. That's gentlemansguidetoflirting.com. You can go to gentlemansguidetoflirting.com and click the Buy Now button, or just search for Gentleman's Guide to Flirting by David Sharp on Amazon.com or anywhere else you buy your favorite books or eBooks, and start changing your life now. Hello there. Welcome to episode 73 of the Gentleman's Guide to Flirting podcast. I am David, the author of the book of the same name, Gentleman's Guide to Flirting, available on Amazon.com and everywhere else you find your favorite books or ebooks worldwide. So, our question for this week is Do women really prefer bad boys? Meaning guys that misbehave or guys that mistreat them. Guys that have quote unquote mishaps, in other words, cheat on them with other women or otherwise do unexpected things, whether that is good or bad. Do women really prefer, like, more the extreme sense of the term bad boy, like criminals, prisoners, scofflaws? So let's put on our scientists' white lab coats and have a look at some hard data to really dig into the question. So in my search for some data that we can all use to see if there's any science behind the claim that women really prefer bad boys, I came across a talk from Jordan Peterson, and it looks like this happened on uh, March 11th, 2017. Jordan Peterson, P-E-T-E-R-S-O-N. He's a famous author and speaker. I'm not saying that I, that I agree with everything he says, but this is just a YouTube video that I came across as I was looking into the subject. Now, the specific YouTube video I'm looking at is uh, is uh, titled 2017-0311, Strengthen the Individual, Q&A Parts 1 and 2. And I'm not going to go through that whole thing. It's uh, over an hour in length. But there was one reply to an audience member's question that was interesting and relevant to our, t our subject here. I'll, I won't quote the whole thing. I'll just hit the uh, high points of it. And again, this is quoting Jordan Peterson's response from this video in a, in a talk he was given at the Ottawa, Canada, O-T-T-A-W-A, -A, Ottawa, Canada, Public Library, on or about March 11th, 2017. Here we go. So his reply was, women don't even like harmless men. They hate them. They like to claw them apart. What women want are dangerous men who are civilized, and they want to civilize them. That's Beauty and the Beast. Then he goes on, he says, I'll tell you a funny story, and only engineers could have come up with this because they're the only ones that have the unparalleled blindness to social convention that would allow them to discover it. So the Google engineers wrote a book a while back called, quote, A Billion Wicked Thoughts. A Billion Wicked, W-I-C-K-E-D, Thoughts. 
which is a study of internet searches, billions of them literally, I'm still quoting Jordan Peterson. They were looking at a lot of pornography use. There's lots known about male pornography use, and it's easy to understand. Males are pretty visually oriented, and what attracts them to pornography is fairly straightforward. You can tell that if you look at graffiti in a men's washroom, you know, it's like two circles and a triangle, and the men are absolutely transfixed by it. That was a joke. The quote continues, For women, the story is more complex. They use pornography too, but it tends to be literary because women tend to like words more than they like visual stimuli. He asked the audience, Does, do you guys know what a Harlequin romance is? That's a, a series of like fantasized romance novels, romance books. He, he continues to say, that's the taming of the wild man, like the general theme of the, or the appeal of a Harlequin romance book. That's the, that's the taming of a wild man, essentially, by the desirable and virginal woman. If you think women don't want that, then you'd better bloody well come up with an explanation for Fifty Shades of Grey. That was a very popular book and movie um, in the past few years, which is the most rapidly selling novel in human history. It is the perfect female fantasy. It's exactly archetypically correct. It's Beauty and the Beast. Jordan Peterson continued, What the Google guys showed was the structure of Beauty and the Beast, though they didn't use that as a referent, that the female pornographic fantasy was... Wild guy, somewhat careless about the wants and desires of others, tamed by the magic of a single woman and brought into a relationship with her. He continues, but here's the comical part. This just made me laugh. What were the five categories of most desirable male entity used most broadly in female pornography? He says it's so embarrassing. Vampire, werewolf, billionaire, surgeon, and pirate. That's the end of the quote from Jordan Peterson from the Ottawa Public Library Q&A session in 2017. So let's take a quick look at the Billion Wicked Thoughts book, just to double check what Jordan Peterson said, um, because the way he said certain things, and I'm really not 100% familiar with his work, I'm not sure if I can just repeat him and consider that gospel. Let's go see what A Billion Wicked Thoughts is about from the author's mouth. There's two authors. Ogi Ogas, O-G-I, last name O-G-A-S, and the second author is listed as Thai Gadam. First name S-A-I, last name G-A-D-D-A-M. The book's ad reads, Want to know what really turns your partner on? A Billion Wicked Thoughts offers the clearest picture ever of the differences between male and female sexuality and the teeming diversity of human desire. What makes men attracted to images and so predictable in their appetites? What makes the setup to a romantic evening so important for a woman? Why are women's desires so hard to predict? Neuroscientists, neuroscientists, O.G. Ogas, I'm probably horribly mispronouncing these names, and Sal Gadam reveal the mechanics of sexual relationships based on their extensive research into the mountains of new data on human behavior available in online entertainment and traffic around the world. Not since Alfred Kinsey in the 1950s has there been such a revolution in our knowledge of what is really going on in the bedroom. What Ogas and Gadam learned and now share will deepen and enrich the way you and your partner think and talk about sex. That's interesting. So let's take a quick peek at their author pages. Ogi Ogas, a PhD, is currently co-authoring two books and he named them. He was the project head of the Dark Horse Project in the Laboratory for the Science of Individuality at the Harvard Graduate School of Education. His credentials sound stellar. Sai, S-A-I Gadam, I think I called him Sal before. It's S-A-I Gadam, Sai Gadam is an entrepreneur and computational neuroscientist by training. He previously co-authored A Billion Wicked Thoughts. Sai currently runs a technology startup that creates AI-enabled education products. He resides in Mumbai, India. Both of these people sound impeccably well qualified. So Now, they don't seem to be identifying uh, in 2021 as I record this as being Google engineers. So I, don't, I think maybe the quote from Peterson is not entirely right. It wasn't like all the Google engineers got together and collaborated on releasing the results of these searches. I think these two highly capable neuroscientists, PhD level neuroscientists, probably got access to Google's data for research purposes, legitimate research purposes, and wrote their book, uh, taking a look at these questions from their, from their point of view, from a data science kind of perspective. So that sounds perfectly legitimate to me. 
So we just covered a lot of ground around looking into recent analysis that was done across a gigantic data set of women's searches around pornographic interests and the romance novel market. That's a weird mixed bag, but that's what we just did. I like data. I like science. That was interesting. Vampires, werewolves, pirates, and billionaire surgeons. Now, I might be with them on the billionaire surgeon one. You probably can't know too many of those. And the point that Jordan Peterson made about Beauty and the Beast is interesting. That was the bit about some women like to take on projects with their men where they know the guy isn't entirely right for them, but they think they can fix or change their guys. And I know some women like that. Perhaps you do too. But back to our real world question about do women prefer bad boys? Now, there is a lot of anecdotal evidence, at least with some women, indicating a preference for the perceived manliness, charisma, machismo, unpredictability, and just general fun of a bad boy. Perceived fun, anyway. But does she really want a guy who is unreliable, who gets in bar fights, who is at risk of going to jail or prison, who abuses drugs or alcohol, who treats her like crap, who cheats on her, who loses his temper, who fails to support her and any children you might have, who is just irresponsible with money and isn't preparing for the future financially or by providing her with a great home. Those ladies should prefer you. You. One of the bold yet respectful ones. The ones who do whatever needs doing to support their loved ones. Those ladies should all be lined up around the block, ready to fill out an application to be with you. Guys like us are increasingly rare in this world. The ones who go for it every day. The ones who stack those wins toward their goals every day. The truth of it is, some ladies prefer the former. The bad boy in the kind of worst sense of it, with the worst outcomes. But my thesis is, what I'm telling you is, what I'm suggesting to you is that most women prefer the latter choice, the one I espouse, the one we talk about all the time in this podcast and we do in the book. Most women prefer the latter when the latter option is available to them and they think they can get that kind of guy. We are what she is looking for. Think about it that way. Keep that in your head. When you're approaching a lady, I know that I'm what she's looking for. She doesn't know it yet, but she's about to find out because you're going to get ready to go over and introduce yourself in a very kind and respectful way. You are what she is looking for. That is what you pursue. That is what you aspire to every day. She just might be walking around out there not knowing what's better for her and that you exist. And what she is looking for is you. And being that man and feeling confident and letting those lost ladies know a guy like you exists that is what the Gentleman's Guide to Flirting book will help you do. Part one is about this general philosophy and mindset that I talk about in the podcast. Parts two and three have very specific, very detailed, ready to use, battlefield tested lines and methods and like a checklist that you can use both in person and online. Part two of the book is for in person, meeting women in person. Part three is for online because that's so much different and needed its own section. Part four is about getting through that first date, through subsequent dates, figuring out if you're on a path to a relationship or not, and navigating that whole process from first date through to the end. All right, that is all I have for you this week. Let's get to work out there. Let's go.